Karaoke is a billion dollar industry and a worldwide phenomenon. Whether you're in a private booth at a slick karaoke club, at a weekly karaoke night at virtually any dive bar in America, or at home using a shitty karaoke machine in YouTube, there is no denying the allure. For singers, you get that moment in the spotlight, your three minutes and 55 seconds of stardom. For spectators, you witness the joy of undiscovered talent or the schadenfreude of the deluded. But not all karaoke songs are created equal. What makes a song well-suited to be performed by any average Joe? What song should everyone agree to leave alone in the binder? That's what the great pop culture debate wants to know as we discuss the best karaoke songs ever. When I sing Do You Really Want to Hurt Me, the crowd usually responds, yes, I'm your host, Eric (laughs) Resniak. Please help me welcome my panelists. She's not drunk enough for karaoke, but she's just drunk enough for this podcast. It's Andrea Guerrero. Play Freebird, woo! (laughs) <laughs> and next up for the stage, it's Curtis Creekmore. Here's your one chance, Fancy. Don't let me down. I charmed a king, a congressman, and an occasional aristocrat, bitch. I, I know you did, and we're not going to say how. That's X-rated. And she's here to entrance you with her shockingly on-point rendition of Montel Jordan's This Is How We Do It. It's Kate Reculia. This is how we do it. Yeah, <laughs> she actually had- See, we already did it. Welcome to the karaoke <laughs> episode, everybody. So how does this work? Since this is a mini-sode, there was no public poll. Our panelists went through lists of popular karaoke songs, as well as their own favorite karaoke songs, and submitted their lists of the top 15. From there, we compared notes and came up with our own final 16. Now we argue about it and insult each other all for your amusement. Now, I want to make this disclaimer. Due to the nature of this topic, this is probably our most subjective debate ever. You could literally pick almost any song, and the ones that we love might not be anywhere close to your personal favorites. So please feel free to share your karaoke phase with us on Twitter at, at culture underscore debate, on Instagram at great pop culture debate, or by leaving a comment on this episode at greatpopculturedebate.com. We'll also create playlists on both Spotify and YouTube so you can sing along with our picks and yours at home. Now, before we actually start, I want to acknowledge that karaoke is more about just the songs. It's also about the experience. So I would like our panelists to share uh, their own memorable karaoke experiences, good or bad. And I'm going to have Kate start. So my I have a lot of really wonderful karaoke experiences. I remember singing with Eric, one Eric Resniak and one Carissa Kloss, who is not on this particular episode, but is on this podcast. Um, your first summer in Boston, Eric singing Love Shack, like absolutely transcendently, the three of us. I remember singing Lover Boys Working for the Weekend uh, while doing a lot of sake bombs at Malu Ken in Kenmore Square. But I think the most memorable, in some ways, karaoke experience for me was the first time I ever did it. I was in my was I in my 30s? I might have been in my late 20s, early 30s. I had never done it before. And I was absolutely shocked how incredible it felt to just like get up there with my music loving, but like out of only high school trained chorus voice, like Mr. Chiz, our quiet chorus teacher is probably like, yeah, you always sang in the back, like... His name is <laughs> Chiz. His, mis- yes, his name is Mr. Chiz. Mr. It's oh, C Z Y Z. There's a, a 0.0% chance he will ever listen to this because yes. I'm apparently <laughs> confident he does not agree with my lifestyle. Go on, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so so yeah, like it, it was like discovering this whole part of me that I didn't even know existed. Now I actually sing in an actual volunteer choir, the Bach Choir of Bethlehem, which is not karaoke, but karaoke opened the door and has meant a great deal to me. That's my karaoke story. I love that. That's so wholesome. Andrea, awesome. how about you? <laughs> my most memorable karaoke night was definitely more of the entire experience of the bar and with a really good friend of mine we were just bouncing around town we were the plan was to go bar hopping we didn't even plan to do karaoke and so we were trying to find places to go we're like looking on google maps and whatever and just like hitting misses everywhere um and then he was like well i know this dive bar like up the road that i used to go to when i was in grad school so let's go there for a drink at least and then we'll figure our night out And so we get there and we sit down at the bar and then we see that they have old style on tap, which is both of our favorite shitty old man beers. (laughs) And so 
we just closed down the bar there until like three in the morning drinking old styles and singing karaoke and it was like kind of a country bar but like not quite it was more like ed hardy country gotcha. if you know what i mean uh-huh. um, like a little trashy a little not so much classy just mostly trashy mm-hmm. um so i went up there and i sang my favorite karaoke song which is hit me with your best shot by pat benatar mm. and i got a standing ovation from about <gasps> half of the room it was <sighs> like one of my proudest moments i wanted to cry and we were both smokers at the time as well. And so, of course, when you're drinking, you're like smoking an entire pack of cigarettes in one night. So we were like in and out. And then I came back in and we were sitting down, just sort of enjoying everyone else singing karaoke. And then the host calls my name up and I didn't even sign up for it. He was just like, next up is Andrea. And I like looked at him and he just kind of shrugged his shoulders. And I was like, okay. And so I went up there and sang Rehab by Amy Winehouse because my voice was in like prime condition yeah. for it <laughs> after <laughs> a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> in. Um, but then my buddy sang um, Just a Girl by No Doubt. And he's like a, a man. So like for him to sing that song was really fun. And then I think one of the last guys was like this old drunk dude that go up there saying cheeseburger in paradise and it was just one of those rare nights where like everyone was in it together and we were like all sort of on the same level and like having the same amount of fun and like no one knew anyone at the bar it was just a very magical night so awesome we are continuing with the wholesome content here on great pop culture (laughs) debate and i'm pretty sure curtis is going to take you home and then i'm going to ruin it all with my story but curtis you go first (laughs) So for those of you who don't know me, I love to sing. I love music. I am a member of the Boston Gay Men's Chorus, and I hated karaoke so much before I joined the chorus. Like I just refused to listen because I like it, it makes my skin crawl when people can't sing. Oh, take us on a journey here, Curtis. Oh boy. <laughs> well, no, that's the thing. So after Boston Gay Men's Chorus rehearsal where we sing for three hours every Wednesday, we then go to a local gay bar, Club Cafe, and sing for more. Like, (laughs) it's it's a great pastime, and it's actually where I met my husband, funny enough. Um, So he had joined the chorus, and that first night across the room, I was like, who's that? I'm going to get a phone (laughs) that. Um, So when we went to karaoke afterward, he was being the loner that he kind of is, standing over on the side, being a wallflower, drinking his um, whiskey. And I walked up to him, and I asked him if he had ever been (laughs) told that he looked like uh, Trixie out of drag. (laughs) He doesn't. Really. He does not I've never seen my husband. Not even remotely. <laughs> so, that's um, quite the. I honestly feel like that would work on me as a parent. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got married. Um, I, I guess I got some game somewhere. Um, but anyway, so we've sung together several different times. Um, our first song that we sang together was actually "At Last I See the Light" from Tangled, a Disney oh, song, and mm-hmm. that actually kind of kicked off a whole Disney theme through our um, relationship. But I will also talk about just some of the amazing singers that I've heard out of the chorus and then in the chorus, uh, one specific person. So because it is a gay club, um, Club Cafe has uh, drag queens come in and sing and host sometimes. And there is a queen named Kia Cristal who is a amazing. She not only looks the part, but she got up and sang, I think it was Queen of the Night by Whitney Houston. Uh, and beautiful. I wasn't paying attention at first, but then she started singing and I whipped around because I thought they were just playing the track. She was pitch perfect. She uh, was like, she had everything. The intonation just, she had it all. I mean, and that means a lot coming from me because I am a music snob and a bitch. So if I tell you it's that true. you sing well, <laughs> you should believe it. That's awesome. And I will say, I regret not spending more time at Club Cafe karaoke, but I was old and I was not going to go out at 10 o'clock at night. No, on I'm, a Wednesday? <laughs> on a Wednesday? My God. <laughs> How dare you? Um, but yes, and, and shout out to both the Gay Men's Chorus, the Boston Gay Men's Chorus and Club Cafe. Sponsor us, Club Cafe. Right. Um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, so I, I have a, a less wholesome story where, uh, picture it, it's the year 2000. It's New York City. Uh, the Marvel Comics Summer 1999 interns, or as we called ourselves, the interns, like in sync, uh, reunited. <laughs> um, and we were doing karaoke when I, I think we were somewhere in the village. I cannot remember this part. I, I, I feel 
like it was in the village, but maybe it wasn't. We're in a, I believe a Korean restaurant that's doing karaoke. And there's like seven of us and um, we're having, you know, beverages. Everyone's <laughs> it, uh, well lubricated. And I'm not going to name any names uh, because I want to protect the people uh, who are actually involved in this. But one of our friends decides to get up and, and the place is packed. And most of the people are, let's just say, from the Asian persuasion. I have no idea the actual you know, ethnography of the room. But mm. he gets up and proceeds to sing the most threatening possible version of David Bowie's China Girl oh. I have ever heard <laughs> in my life. Oh, no. And no. I'm watching this unfold and everyone in the room is turning and looking at this extremely white very handsome also gentlemen just menacing at the mic the growling out the lyrics and i could feel my soul leaving my body and i was just like we are actually in danger like, <laughs> this is really bad and i'm quietly collecting our things over in the corner because and as soon as that i don't remember exactly how this happened but my recollection this is like 20 years ago is one of the other members of our group as soon as that person finished with the mic grabbed him and said we need to get the fuck out of here right now and we all booked um oh. but yeah <laughs> wow that is that yeah. is a karaoke foul. Right? <laughs> Please Woo. don't be like weirdly, like really weirdly threatening in a community that is not your community. Like, oh. I, can't, I can't even imagine where this was coming from. But yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. Other than that, I've had really wonderful experiences with karaoke. <laughs> um, I, know. I was trying to think of like other sort of like off color experiences. Uh, the first night that I did ever do karaoke there were private rooms it was at limelight in like near emerson yes, college in boston we love that place it was in a private room and then we went out into the, the 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 like open area and there was like a middle school co-ed like at, well couldn't have, i don't know if it was a sleepover but it was like a birthday party of middle schoolers and a small pack of like tween age boys got up and sang what a man which is just so <laughs> adorable <laughs> like it's like it it, it it starts out adorable and then you're like oh this song is problematic oh, <laughs> adorably uncomfortable that song is raunchy it it is. Is. she's open like 7-eleven i think is yes okay yeah, i mean it's like, fine when pep sings it maybe not so much when like a 12 year old boy does right. yeah no. like, and depends just, on they're what like kind of stank you put on, on it. the stage i was like i don't <laughs> I, this is feels like I should tell someone. <laughs> but like, I need an adult. Yes. <laughs> they came with adults. Where is your parent and or guardian? Oh, she's right there. Are, is it Sandy Pepper Dennis? No, it is not. Then I'm going to need you to stop. She's up twerking on stage beside him, like, living her life. She's a cool mom. <laughs> Well, th there you go, folks. I want you, if you have great karaoke stories, to please share them with us. Uh, send us an email, you know, send us smoke signals, whatever works for you. But we would love to share them on our Instagram and on our YouTube channel. Uh, with that, though, let's queue up my way and get into the debates. Three quarters of the panel wanted to take a ride on the Riverboat Queen, preferring Proud Mary by Ike and Tina Turner. But I wanted to go to the beach each and catch a wave with Nicki Minaj's Starships. Andrea, <laughs> tell us why we shouldn't do anything nice and easy while I explain why starships were meant to fly. Uh, Andrea, you go first. <laughs> so I think both songs have redeeming qualities about them. And I also think both songs are incredibly challenging in their own special way. But I think that the advantage that Proud Mary has is the... The, the crowd participation factor, right? There's the call and response of rolling, rolling. Everyone loves that. And everyone yep. knows that part. Whereas with like starships, like not everyone knows all the words of starships. Most people don't know all the words of starships. There's a lot of them. Whereas I feel like if you start to sort of bomb with Proud Mary, if you are personifying Tina Turner, like you should be, it should still be an entertaining watch. Yeah, I mean, listen, I love Proud Mary. I love I can Tina. Well, I love Tina. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me let me love Tina Turner. Let me let me really specify that in the gay community that can be taken in multiple ways. Um, mm -hmm. I actually think that Starships is really easy. That was my argument: is that <laughs> of, of all the Nicki Minaj songs, I think it's one of her slower raps, and you don't need to get all the words. That's fine. You like you can completely fumble the verses, and as long as you're getting like the a a a a, you're okay. But you get to that chorus and. 
everyone is going to sing along with you. It's not a hard chorus. It's really mostly kind of yelling the word starships. Like, <laughs> like anyone can do that. And it's got a great energy to it in that um, you, like, you don't need to pay attention to the lyric board when you're getting to that chorus, right? We know the chorus. You can be like jumping up and down and working on the stage and getting the crowd pumped up. And I think you're going to get a lot of a- activity. Um, whereas with the, the, the downside to Proud Mary to me is, number one, you do actually have to be able to sing to do Proud Mary. And I don't think you have to be able to sing to do Starships. Um, but also it has varying tempos. And I think the slow tempo is going to bum people out up until you get to the big one. And, but then, like, if you can twirl and do the, the arm movements, like, uh, mm-hmm. you, you got to put on a goddamn show. But I don't know a lot of people can do that. So uh, I'm going to assume that, well, let me ask you, Curtis and Kate, where are you on this one? This I'm is still- not... America's easiest karaoke song (laughs) race, Eric. This is the best karaoke song, and it is Proud Mary in this moment. I agree with Curtis, yes. And and I will say, we all come to these with our own rubric that happens for every episode. For me, I was looking for songs that are accessible, that have good energy, that can lead to crowd participation. Mm -hmm. Um, And one other element that... um, is I, Kate can say, because you were there for my 40th birthday karaoke mm-hmm. extravaganza. Oh, that was such a fun night. It was uh. a great night. And I picked Sarah by Fleetwood Mac, thinking how much I love that song, <laughs> not realizing, and this is where my fourth point comes in. There are vast stretches of that song where it's just instrumental and is a karaoke song. What a boner killer for everyone. Mm-hmm. So if there's long stretches where it's just beautiful music in the background, not a great karaoke song for me. That doesn't apply here, but I'm just saying in terms of like what I was looking for and making my decisions, that is a factor. So that being said, we are advancing Proud Mary. Um, and uh, can someone on this panel please be updating our brackets? If you have not downloaded your bracket, please go to greatpopculturedebate.com, go to uh, brackets and polls, and you can be playing along with us at home by downloading your own version of the listener bracket. Next up we have, uh, I was once again down under on the votes, which is fitting since I preferred Natalie and Bruglia's torn to Gloria <laughs> Gaynor's I Will Survive. Kate, explain why as long as you've got love to give, you know you'll stay alive. I will explain why I am not all out of faith for torn. I'm going to have Kate go first. So my rubric when I was making my decisions was sort of like, what is the, uh, what is the ideal balance between a song that is sheer, like the fun level to sing and to hear, right. Both as the singer and Uh as the audience, what the recognition factor is like, is it classic, but played out? Is it new? And like, wow, I've never heard that before. Like, why the hell are you singing this song? And also the sincerity versus irony scale. Um, And I'll get to the sincerity one in a while because I feel like I will survive by Gloria Gaynor really where it comes down to for me is that recognition factor. It is an absolute stone cold classic. It is a literal classic of the ballad, power ballad genre, disco genre. It's an anthem. It's a queer anthem. It still sounds good. Um, you, everyone knows at first I was afraid I was petrified like that. The whole first verse leading into the chorus, like is part of the American consciousness. Um, as long as I know how to love, I know I'll stay alive. Like there's something about that. That's such a great, hopeful message (laughs) that like is why I think people keep coming back to it. I mean, the question is, is it overdone a little bit? Maybe like when people queue up, I will survive. There's a little part of me that's like, is this going to suck or is this going to be great? Like because everybody does it, which is how I introduce the idea that on this particular bracket. Oh, my God, I am flippable as hell. Try to convince me. about <laughs> <laughs> I am here for that. And I agree that. Um, so my main argument against I will survive is. We're now wrapping up season four of the show. I can't count how many goddamn episodes I Will Survive has been on the bracket and has advanced many times. And as much as I love that song, I am sick to death of it. Um, Also, if you're listening to this and you're wondering, where's Build Me Up Buttergup? Where's Sweet Caroline? Where's all these other really corny ass karaoke songs that everybody sings? We did, I didn't put them on, and I, I I mean the panel can speak for this, but specifically for that reason, like I don't want to hear no goddamn no what is that picture song <laughs> that's Kid Rock and Cheryl Crow? You know what I'm talking about? No, no, no it was no. like you could not go to a karaoke night without some bro singing that with his like 
sad girlfriend who wanted out of that relationship like <laughs> oh. yeah. eric this is not america's most common karaoke song right <laughs> this is the best karaoke song i agree that's why i'm saying they're not on here yeah. so i that all said i'm gonna go to torn so um unlike starships i do think you do know how to sing to do torn um you don't need to be able to belt because it's not a belt song but you need to know how to sing and you need to know how to do emotion successfully um um, it's a storytelling song, even yes. though you're not, she's not actually, but you like have to communicate. These are, the, this is how I feel, right? Like um, <laughs> if you chew on your, the sleeve of your cardigan, you're going to get extra bonus points for authenticity. <laughs> um, it, like, it's a performance. You've got to be able to sell torn, but if you can, you are going to get the bar going because demographically there's a good chance that there are Gen Xers and early millennials because every teen girl and gay boy that was alive in 1995 was like, mm. yes, this is the song for me. I cherish, I, I yes. cherish that song. I cherish that song for that reason. Yep. And so so for me, I think it is actually a great karaoke song, especially for where we are now. Now that you know we've gotten the boomers mostly out of this area. The Gen X was like, yes, torn, Nelly and Bruglia, I'm completely involved in this. And you're gonna get the singing along, especially in the chorus, because it's a very singable song. Uh Curtis, where are you on this? I love Torn. I think it's a really great song. I even enjoy it at karaoke for me it's not just the cardigan biting it you have to get on the floor you better be on the fucking floor <laughs> rolling around and feeling your oats however nothing's right nothing's I'm right torn. and that's what i love about that song is it's become a meme like you don't sing the song but i'm torn i'm natalie and bruglia like when you're talking to people just in regular conversation <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's true the reason that i gave it to i will survive and i still do is reachability. So we talked about it. And Eric, you said every gay boy and um, teenage girl who was alive in the early 2000s, late 90s will love this song. I agree. I also think that those people will love I Will Survive. And it has even further reach because it's an older song. It's always been a classic. When that comes on, everybody in the club is doing their best spin. They're singing along because they all know the words. And then if Torn comes on, you have, you know, the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, if they're there, that are just like, eh, get another beer. I so, resent that. <laughs> oh, sorry. I have to adjust my scale because we've yes. moved so far into the 20s at this it's point. It's true. 50s, 60s, my friend. Yeah. All right. So you're sticking with I Will Survive. I am. Andrea. I am also sticking with I Will Survive with, I agree with everything Curtis just said. So now we come to the fun time. Where we have, unless, Kate, are you sticking with I Will Survive or are you going to Torn? I mean, if I go to Torn, I'm guessing I Will Survive is still a higher seed and we'll continue. There's no there seeds. There are no seeds. Oh. <laughs> so the way the ties work in a mini sewed where there are no seeds, because in some case we do have seeds, um, is it's a round robin tiebreaker thing. And so typically I start with the first tiebreaker and then it goes to the next person in alphabetical order. So it would be Andrea, then Curtis, then Kate. The question is, do we want to unleash the Kraken this early? You know, I let's keep it going with I Will Survive. Although, for the record, when I hear this start playing on the karaoke machine, I'm like, I'm interested. Tell me more. But when I hear Torn, I'm like on my feet screaming. Like, yes. <laughs> I agree. I agree. But I also hear the arguments everyone's making. So we are advancing Gloria and I Will Survive. We were evenly split between Lady Gaga's Bad Romance and Summer Nights from the cast of Grease. Andrea, I want your loving, but none of your regrets as to why romance <laughs> should advance. While Curtis has thoughts on Summer Nights, tell me more, tell me more. And I'm going to have Curtis go first. Well, does he have a car, Eric? You have to... <laughs> um, the fact that you... like that's It's just so well known. Like The fact that this came from a movie. I think it's the only song on here it is yeah that came Pondus from like Rackers. a movie musical it's not yeah. an actual just like song that was ever written um the thing that i love about this song that sets it apart from most of the other things on here not all of them but most of them is audience participation or mm -hmm. being able to get more of your friends on stage at the same time because this requires not only just the duet but you need the dudes and the girls who are going to back those people up and oh well oh well oh well oh maybe they're all dudes <laughs> if you go to the karaoke that i go to everybody's a dude which is fantastic uh <laughs> but it's an interesting song it's fun it's kitschy it's camp um i i love it i love it and i love bad romance don't get me wrong like lady gaga is queen and all that bullshit however 
I just don't see Bad Romance as like a karaoke song. It's like if the DJ were to put it on as the video and then everybody's like singing along and dancing, but it's actually Gaga performing it, I'm on board. But if someone gets up on stage and they try to perform it, you're just not going to touch it. You're not going to touch the original. You're not going to come in in an egg. So <laughs> summer nights for me. You don't know my life. <laughs> what's and jan it's funny, doing what are her it, plans <laughs> right it's funny because that could also work for either gaga or mork from mork or mindy and i feel like that's something that we need to explore <laughs> anyway that's a tangent andrea go for it i feel like bad romance is a very difficult performance to do not just in terms of singing because i don't you don't i don't think you need to be able to sing very well for this one but this and this is a pure performance song so if you're at that right level of drunk if you're like three four five drinks in and you are just like in your karaoke sweet spot this is the song to do talk about menacing performances this is one that you can make pretty fucking menacing and i also think this one has really good crowd crowd participation which is a very important factor when it comes to choosing a karaoke song um it's again i I think this is for for our generation almost just as iconic as the beginning of i will survive like you hear those that beginning run that lady gaga does and you're like oh shit here we go bad romance yeah it's going down for real um and I just think that that is a lot more fun than summer nights. And I just, I don't really like summer nights all that much personally, just in, in general. Um, I have a question and I'm going to get so in trouble with the gays right now, but when I was filling out my bracket in my head, is bad romance the one that has the rap <gasps> thing in the middle or is that poker face? <laughs> that's because po- that's poker face. is it poker face? Yeah. Eric, do I? Bad what? romance is the rah rah ah ra, ah ah. Like I, I know the song and I know the chorus, but in my head, for some odd reason, I'm putting the "I'm not bluffing, it's my muffin." That I'm just stunning when oh, I'm go gunning. No, that's, that's poker face. That's poker okay, face. so I'm sorry, I'm changing my vote. <laughs> 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 that was literally the only reason I was advancing bad romance because I, I, another mention of the Boston Game's chorus. We performed mm-hmm. poker face and um, little. Sean John Crooks came up on stage and did that goddamn <laughs> rap and he slayed it every goddamn time. Um, and um, that's a great karaoke moment. I think that Bad Romance is great. Don't get me wrong. And I, I think all of Gaga songs are great. Well, not all of Gaga songs are great, but a lot of them are. Um, but I'm giving it to Summer Nights because I literally thought that that was the last <laughs> uh, Kate, are you sticking with uh, Summer Nights? I am sticking with Summer Nights for a lot of the, the reasons Curtis mentioned, especially the fact that it's like it's like a group song and that we don't have a lot of great like there's no um, wannabe on here. Right. Like mm. this is a great group song to mm. do this one. And then you get to do the ah, uh, uh, like that. Like, stupid, like, <laughs> uh, that again, I missed it. Serious. What was that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just did it very poorly, but the like John Travolta is extremely exaggerated Ugh. About, anyway, about, about the summer nights. You, it, it's extremely oh, campy. at the end, at the oh. end, yeah. before it's before the note, <sighs> exactly before the, yeah. Yeah. Before the yeah. note. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's just so there's so much like actual acting and performance. I mean, it is a musical theater song, and I think it is also the only like musical song, not just like film song. It's the only one of those that we have on the list. Everything else I think is a pop song. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yep. I, I will say that uh, we will be putting a playlist up of all of the panelist picks. And so it's going to be like 60 songs almost. Um, and so there's a lot more variety in there and there are some other musical songs and mm-hmm. some uh, Disney songs as well. Curtis has got a Mulan song on there and it's not reflection. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> what was it? I'll make a man out of you. Correct. Oh, okay. such a good one. Good one. Tell me yeah. I'm wrong. Tell Let's me I'm fucking get wrong. Down to um, Eric, just so Sir, just so the audience knows. The Huns. Kate's <laughs> <laughs> taking it out. Out. Okay. Admission Maybe break. That one should have made it to the bracket. Um, how many at the end of the day, how many songs from the four of us actually did we have any that were on all four of our brackets? No. We no. Had- 
we had one that was on three out of four and two that were on two out of four, three that wow. were on two out of four. So audience, that should tell you something. And I hope you enjoy listening to that 60 song playlist. <laughs> it's going to be a good playlist. And literally I will try to find all the karaoke versions on YouTube and make a YouTube playlist Ooh. so you can actually sing along with them. Amazing. We're a full service deal here at the Great Pop Culture Debate. That's also... <laughs> They t- write about me on the bathroom stalls at, at, uh, in Queens, New York. Um, but uh, yeah, so look for that playlist. Uh, it will be out by the time you're listening to this over on our website under the extras or the bonus section. Um, next up, I am once again marooned as the sole vote, this time for the classic <laughs> duet Islands in the Stream by Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers, while the rest of the panel wanted to go all aboard for Midnight Train to Georgia by Gladys Knight and the Pips. Curtis, explain why you'd rather live in Gladys's world while I explain how you could go all wrong by not sailing away with stream. And I'm going to go to Curtis first. So I love Dolly Parton. My drag name is partially after her. Her name is Jolene. So obviously I have a very deep respect and love for the Queen of the South. However, I went back and listened to all of these songs and this one specifically just didn't hit the same way that it did when I was thinking about like what songs I want to see on Mm -hmm. this. I think it's great that it's a duet. I think it has like it's country kind of. um, And I think it's the only song on here that is anywhere close to country, but Midnight Train to Georgia, both of these are like super deep cuts. Like you would have to go to several different karaoke nights in order to be able to hear both of these songs. But But it would be special. It would be a very Mm -hmm. special moment for sure. Midnight Train is, it's slow and velvety and it's it's just, it hits you different than most of the, the things that you'll see on this list. And my favorite part, and it's not even from like a karaoke night that I've gone to, but it was on Will and Grace when, um, What's her name? Sandra Bernhardt is performing Mm. this song (laughs) with Will and Grace. And at the end, they let Grace kind of take over. And at the end, she's like, I got to go. I got to go. go. I got to go. And that is why I am pushing this that is a great argument of um, specifically the will and grace moment thank you that is great um I'm going to start with saying um I need to acknowledge the the cheek the gall the audacity <laughs> the gumption that comes along with passing over St. Dolly Parton. Mm. Um, I don't know how you live with yourself, but you know, you need to do you. I joke. Uh, and obviously I <laughs> adore Gladys Knight and the pips. I, I wanted to be a pip when I was growing mm-hmm. up. Um, I'm not sure where one goes. Is there a pip school? But and um, now you're a pup, right? <laughs> no. Oh, how dare you? <laughs> um, I'm a bitch. I'm not a pup. Um, but uh, I actually do think Islands of the Stream is such a great karaoke song. Like um, it is a duet so you need to have someone who can do you you need to have a buddy and it needs to be someone you can trust and you need to have chemistry if you're up there and you're with someone who's got nothing going on good luck to you because you are about to die for the next four minutes and everybody (laughs) in that bar is just going to look at you with death in their eyes um but if you have someone who can sing and you can sing and you have a certain playful charisma islands in the stream is a bop ladies and gentlemen it's got a great verse it's got an even better chorus when you get to the chorus how are you not going to sing along with that if you're in a karaoke bar? How are you not going to be swaying your arms? We're all islands in the stream. That is what we are. No one in between. How could we go wrong? Like, it's so good. Um, and I don't know which one of Kenny Rogers' heads was involved with the recording of the song. <laughs> but it did great, even on top of Dolly. So that's my argument. And I understand. Also, I will say this. There's not really a bridge for the song. It's pretty much uninterrupted singing the whole time. Mm. So you never have that awkward, I'm um, standing on stage in front of 40 people. I don't know. And I'm just going to stand here with my hands in my pocket until <laughs> the song comes back on. Um, it's, it's, it just flows like an island in the stream. Uh, Kate, where are you on this? I'm I'm on I mean Islands in the Stream is a fantastic song, but like Midnight Train to Georgia has a very it 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 has a soul. It really has a literally soul <laughs> like <laughs> vibe to it. And and I just think it every time I hear it, it makes me like notice how special it is again. And sometimes no slight to Dolly or Kenny. Mm. But like a bad islands in the stream mm. is a bad thing. Mm. Mm. Like it's just no. I'm gonna I'm gonna I don't smoke. I'm gonna go out and smoke and come back. <laughs> go to the bathroom, Kate. Just, that's what yes. I always did. Just go to the bathroom. 
Beaker from the Muppets sings the hits. Um, <laughs> Andrea, what have you got here? Don't get it twisted. I love Dolly. Everyone loves mm-hmm. Dolly. No one is. No one here is saying that Dolly isn't the greatest person in the world because she is. However, Islands in the Stream, I think, is so boring. It is. <laughs> And, so and I feel bad saying that because, Eric, you did you such a should. fantastic job at painting me this word picture of how it should be at the karaoke bar when that song comes on. But every time I have been present for that song, I'm with I'm with Kate. I'm just like, all right, I'm going to go get another drink. I'm going to go outside like <laughs> I just have no interest in it. Zero interest. And maybe it's a generational gap. Maybe it's a cultural gap. I don't know. But I grew up more on Motown less on Dolly Parton and I just I find Islands in the Stream very boring I'm sorry it's okay and Dolly would forgive you so uh we are we are gonna move Dollywood Dollywood (laughs) sign me up um so Midnight Train to Georgia is advancing and next up we were unanimous in our next two picks with You Oughta Know by Alanis Morissette scratching its nails down the back of Undone the Sweater Song by Weezer and Love by Which the is what do you say? Weezer sweater song is very fun because of the spoken intro, but you ought to know needs to win. Yes, absolutely. And Love Shack by the B-52s heading down that Atlanta highway away from Elton John. And I'm still standing. Uh, another even split as Kate and I ordered up a platter of meatloaf and I would do anything for love. But I won't do that. <laughs> While Andrea and Curtis would rather be at home with Ray and Amy Winehouse's rehab. Kate, explain why you would do anything for anything. Andrea, say no, 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 and push for wino. I'll have Andrea go first. Let me let me pose a question to the group. How many words in that meatloaf, meatloaf song do you actually know? Other a than a lot of them, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. All of them. I think without I could also having to look yes, without at going the to the internet or anything. Yes. Yes. I I don't believe <laughs> that that is the truth for the majority of karaoke goers. I think Fair. this is a special group, which is great. <laughs> using but, the term special as a euphemism, and I'll take it. But I this is another song where I think I like the idea of it more than I like the practice of it. And, um, you know, you do the Amy Winehouse rehab song. Again, it's another song that everyone knows. And uh, that song is also like, it could go either really well or really poorly. Um, but the, the meatloaf song, yeah, great, great idea on paper, not, not in practice. All right, Kate, here we go. <laughs> She's now so, going to read all of the lyrics to Meat Love. <laughs> so, so I, I said before that my rubric was sheer fun to sing and to hear, recognition factor, kind of striking a balance between it's classic but not played out, and like it's familiar. But I'm like, oh, I can see why you would choose this. And then there's also the sincerity scale versus the irony scale, right? I am the mind that sort of ironic karaoke is sort of the opposite of the point of karaoke. It has to, in some way, represent this kind of glorious, unironic connection with human emotion using popular song as a conduit to transcendence, specifically as, like, accessible to the amateur, right? Like, I mean, yes, when you have a ringer come in to sing karaoke, it's awesome. But there's something so special about hearing a regular person voice, like, really just, like, you know, melt your face off with something. Um And I want to say that Jim Steinman, RIP, absolute legend, just left us this year, is the person who was built to write these kinds of songs. Power power balladeer par excellence. So Meatloaf sings it, but Jim Steinman is the the songwriter behind many songs that we also chose like many of us had we all had sort of our different Jim Steinman songs uh total eclipse of the heart um it's all coming back to me now uh Mr. Loaf's also brilliant uh two out of three ain't bad (laughs) like these songs like like Jim Steinman's particular genius for excess was deeply sincere but there's also this degree of kitschy lyrical wit which is why 
like I know the lyrics to these songs because they're really silly. Like total eclipse of the heart. Once upon a time I was falling in love. Now I'm only falling apart. (laughs) It's all coming back to me now. (laughs) There were nights of endless pleasure was more than any laws allow. Um, (laughs) Oh, is that what the words are? Yes. 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 Oh, that is not what I thought the words were. I I thought it was it was more than any lousy love. That's what I always thought. (laughs) Oh. That's a good episode too. Like songs that have lyrics you don't yes, understand. That you misheard. Yeah. Um, and so two out of three ain't bad. The chorus of that song is I want you, I need you, but there ain't no way I'm ever gonna love you. Now don't be sad, because two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> so, like, Damn so why is I would do anything for love the most Jim Steinman song, Meat Love song, to include as a karaoke song? Because it's incredibly grandiose. It is um it has this like question, right? It's a story song. He would do anything for love, but not that. And he's not going to tell you for a while. Um, it was for me, my first introduction to Meatloaf and Jim Steinman, like in the course of my life, this was an enormous hit when I was in like fifth or sixth or seventh grade. I forget exactly when. Yeah. And it has this incredible sneak attack call and response in the final bridge where he's talking to his lady love. And it's like this stealth little little mini duet that includes the immortal lyrics. Will you cater to every fantasy I got? Will you hose me down with holy water if I get too hot? Hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hot. So, is someone typing very loudly? What is that? Someone is typing very loudly. Andrea? Are you writing a rejoinder? <laughs> Andrew, are you there? Uh-oh, we can't hear her. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. How could we hear her keyboard but That's not That's so fascinating. Her? Oh, my sound cut out, technical yes. difficulties. Can we log out and come back in? <laughs> my PC sound is working, but isn't Kester, is it? Wait, okay. can, wait what's we, happening? This okay. is the I'm voice of s- Andrea. <laughs> She's talking. Sorry. It's not, her, it's not your fault. So what's going to happen is I'm going to stop. And then we're going to start a new one, okay? So hold on for just a second. She's not back. Okay. (laughs) We will be right back. Hey, Kate. Hey, Eric. So I heard, and this may be true, that you were actually the Great Pop Culture Debate's very first Patreon subscriber. (gasps) Was I? You were. You're not only a panelist, you're also a founder. Also a founder. I mean, it does give me a feeling of joy to contribute towards high quality podcasts like the great pop culture debate so that, you know, like I get swag. Yeah. What kind of swag do you get? Um, You get a button. That's the one I signed up for. Is there a tote? I feel like there should be a tote. (laughs) There's not a tote yet, but that's a great idea. I have some other ideas that I'm working on. You get access to things early. You get access to Patreon only little mini sods. You get to hear the warm-ups before when everyone's just kind of getting their little sea legs before they get into the main the main attraction and you get season zero you get season zero it's exactly right you will never hear the otherwise folks and there's some great episodes in that which include best madonna single best rupaul's drag race lip sync best uh 90s cartoon and the only way you can hear those is by getting a patreon sponsorship with for as low as two dollars a month then you even get season zero just for that so so thank you very much kate uh we appreciate all of our patreon sponsors and if you do have the interest, please go to patreon.com backslash great pop culture debates and support us. So, so we get all that holy water. Excellent. Very metal, but in like a really dramatic pining feelings way. And then we finally found out at the very end what it is that he will not do for love. And what is that? Sooner or later, you'll be screwing around. But I won't do that. That was two different voices. I'm sorry. It was. Okay. Because I sang both parts. And it just, it's so cheesy and transcendent and so stupid and fun. And if you can sing it, it's actually not that hard to sing. Mr. Loaf doesn't have like much of a range, (laughs) but his heart and his soul is always in it. And I think that that is epic karaoke genius. Mr. Love's Thank early you. music has a big range. It but does, yeah. That song. But by the time so. he gets there, he's not. She's had it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Curtis, where are you on this one? This ain't RuPaul's most grandiose karaoke <laughs> song race. Isn't it? Isn't no, it? No, Isn't it's it? not. So as we were sitting here and Kate was giving her argument, I Googled because as I was thinking about it, I'm like, this song is so 
long. And when I looked mm-hmm. it up, there are so many different times, but every <laughs> single one of them is over seven minutes. Yeah. Yes, Do you a, really want to stand ethic. there? No. No, do you want to stand there and listen to someone croak out for seven <laughs> plus minutes about why they will do anything for love, but they won't do that, which apparently they won't cheat, which yes. is Curtis, some idiotic. days I just pray to the gods of <laughs> no, sex and drums and rock and roll. God damn it. If we were going to put any meatloaf song on this list, it would have been uh, Paradise by the Dashboard oh, that- Light. Is too long. Which is also like 12 minutes long, but at least it's like upbeat and interesting. This one absolutely is not. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Melissa. My sister, if you ever listened to this, this was one of her (laughs) favorite songs in 1996. I see you. I hear you. (laughs) (laughs) I I I am never going to love you. I like Rehab. I think it's a fun song. I think it has so much more reach than this song does. More people are going to be singing Rehab from the audience than I would do anything for love. Most people are going to be in the bathroom. So all right, do you, I'm, I'm going to be a super bummer. Rehab makes me sad. Yeah, I can hear that too. <laughs> because it's like, I wish she had gone to rehab. Like, she's saying, no, 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 but girl, you needed to go. Like, it's just, it's just, it's a little too on point for me. And it kind of punctures that karaoke bubble of like, yay, but maybe, I don't know, as, as in, as we're in death as we're in life, I guess. I don't know. I guess. <laughs> I mean, here's my of all the other people who have died up until this point from either overdose or from whatever decisions that they made in their life, we still sing their songs. You may think about it, but, but I hope that but doesn't those songs affect them. Aren't, like specifically about I'm not going to rehab because yeah. I don't need to. <laughs> and, 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 and I don't have to. Right. Well, guess what, Mimi? Like, <laughs> like, like Mercedes Benz is not about like that's a great song. That's not about substance abuse. Right. <laughs> exactly. Songs not about substance abuse. Um, so okay, Kate, don't hate me, but I'm actually gonna switch my vote. Um hey, it's cool, it's cool. And it's I'll fine. tell you why. Uh, for me, and I love that song by Meatloaf. I'm not a huge fan of Meatloaf himself, specifically his politics. We don't have to get into that. Mm. Um, but I do think Curtis's argument about being it, it being seven minutes is a real issue. It had I it didn't even occur to me. My issues when I was thinking about it was like I love the song and I I I think it is actually it sounds amazing in karaoke if you can do it right. But you also need to have a duet partner. If you don't have that, you're in trouble. And you also really need to have backup singers for the oh oh like the the story. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. But Imagine if you do. Imagine if all of a sudden in the back of the crowd, you're like, like lady, like stands up and like sings to you from across the room. The drama of that moment. Now, listen, America, if you can give me that, if right? you can have that, if you can have like people planted in the audience to be your Greek chorus and you can have <laughs> your lady love skulking out of the, but she has to skulk out of the audience. She also has to writhe around on the floor for like the whole last part of the song. That's part of it. You have to commit. If you can give me that, then this is song should advance but generally speaking it you can't and seven minutes is a, a lot of planning it, yeah i mean seven minutes is basically holding a room full of people hostage with this song. <laughs> i mean that's what it comes down to so i am going to advance rehab as much as i do love that song and i disagree vehemently with curtis when he said it's boring it is nope. i'm boring. going to listen to it as soon as we're done with this i'm going to listen to it and i'm going to twirl so Earl, Earl, Earl. <laughs> throw on some fleetwood mac and keep twirling i always um, do idea great right. pop culture debate sponsored karaoke night oh yes. my actual god 100 percent into it want it to happen uh, how do we do this maybe we do this at club cafe maybe that's or somewhere like new york is probably a more central place for all of us to meet and probably easier to get to mm-hmm. and i've always wanted to sing karaoke at new york and be found and be put on broadway so <laughs> oh my god make it happen make it happen um, <laughs> I am taking applications now. If someone wants to just like stand up in the audience and like call and respond to me about all the things that like I they want me to do for them, but not that. <laughs> but not that. You heard it here, folks. And actually, uh, I will say when DragCon comes back mm. to New York City, I have every intention of doing karaoke night with great pop culture debate and our listeners. If you're listening to this, DragCon is coming to New York City. Find us. We will be having a karaoke night somewhere. And a booth, hopefully. 
Oh, yeah. absolutely. Don't worry. We would get our own thing. Uh, finally, in a scorching 80s showdown, we are deadlocked between Human League's Don't You Want Me and Bonnie Tyler's Total Eclipse of the Heart. I will explain why Curtis and Andrea will both be sorry if they don't pick Want Me, while Curtis argues that Forever is going to start tonight with Eclipse. And Curtis, <laughs> you go first. I truly do not understand how this is even a battle. How is this even split evenly? I, I look really look forward to both of you saying why this one of the most iconic drink songs <laughs> of all time, I think, but even like more so for karaoke, Total Eclipse, of, like you got the turnaround built right in. Like all you have to do is turn around on you the stage it. while you're singing it <laughs> and you're performing the song. It, it, I, it's just, it's such a great song. I know it's also long. So don't get me wrong. This one's pretty long as well. I don't think it's quite as long as the meatloaf one, but it's, it hits so many different levels. Like it's deep and it's emotional and it's angry, but it's also hurt. And it's just, it's so many different things and it's been used in 15,000 different movies. So it's very well known. The entire audience is going to be singing this along with you if you perform it. And I would say 75% of the audience would sing along to Don't You Want Me. Even if you don't know the song before it starts up, by the time you get to the second chorus, everyone is going to sing along with it because it's yep. easy, yep. it's catchy, yep. and everybody in that bar wants to get laid. So it has a message <laughs> and it is easily deliverable. So here's my argument. And I hear, like, listen, I love Bonnie Tyler. I love Total Eclipse of the Heart. I feel in my soul that I am living in a powder keg and giving off sparks. <laughs> but for me, that is a hard song. The, the level it's of difficulty hard. for Total yeah. Eclipse of the Heart is a high one also the the demerit to the turnaround is while total eclipse is not technically a duet you do need to have two people to pull that off because mm. the person on stage can't be singing turn around oh, and no. then you need, you need bright eyes that. exactly bright eyes exactly like you have to have <laughs> someone else there and whereas don't you want me is set up as a duet and it's a great karaoke duet because you literally do not have to be able to sing in any real way to execute this song the range is limited the chorus is basically just yell singing but everybody will do it uh you can also get a little sexy with it i 100 percent traumatized my older brother while performing this at a gay bar ironically with a woman at a birthday karaoke party and his response to my gyrations were i did not need to see that um <laughs> but my his, final what are you gonna say loss. kate his loss <laughs> exactly i i like think my actual response was you need to get into it um <laughs> but my, my final argument here is grooveless white men this is really the song for you you just have to like jerk your body around to the 4-4 beat and stomp around the stage like herman munster while pretending uh. that you feel good about yourself it's an easy win um and chances are you might actually get lucky so I put it to the ladies. Andrea, where are you? I am sticking with Total Eclipse of the Heart, um, mostly because if it's the karaoke situation where the music video is playing mm, in the background, yeah. <laughs> point. Total Eclipse argument. of the Heart takes the cake. For Fair. listeners that have not seen the music video, please go watch it uh. immediately, post haste. There's like aliens and she's like seducing them or they're seducing her and she's in like a white negligee and it's like an, an eclipse in the background, but like not like a real one, like a photoshopped one. It's <laughs> it's beautiful. There's fencing. I, I will see your that and I will raise you. N watch the regular version of the video first, then watch the literal translation yes. video, uh. which is spectacular. It's right up there with AHA's Take On Me, the literal translation video. Okay, it is so good. Whoever did those is a genius. Yep. So you're sticking with Total Eclipse. I am. Kate. So I know I just like sang the praises up and down of songwriter Jim Steinman. Total Eclipse of the Heart is an absolute banger. The literal video is an absolute work of art. It is really hard to sing. Mm -hmm. And Don't You Want Me by Human League is it's a really great new wave karaoke song. Yeah. Um, and I think that it only it's a great uh duet for people who are kind of like limited vocally and i know this is not rupaul's most accessible you say, <laughs> karaoke rates, but there is something again that kind of like the transcendence of just like seeing people who aren't singers who don't know they can do it like fucking kill it and you can kind of kill the song if you are not that well trained and it's also it's a great 
like there's great like sexy tension between these like ex lovers talking about how like their relationship like she's way above him now but like don't you still want me like it's just a really interesting song um and it's just a killer it's a sick beat i really love the song i am human league all the way so we have a tie and as i mentioned earlier ties and minisodes i get the first tiebreaker and next it will go to andrea so i am breaking it for don't you want me (laughs) i'm happy to die i'm happy we died on this hill I do want to say, and maybe I should save this for later, but it really doesn't matter. I have never seen anyone perform Don't You Want Me. Same. Really? Really? Yeah, same. I've definitely seen it. Go up to Central New York, kids. That's all I have to tell you. (laughs) Where it's still like 2005. (laughs) You're being very generous, kids. All right, well, that is it for round one. Oh, no, someone is coming up to do Adele, someone like you. We have to go hide in the bathroom. We'll be right back to this break. <laughs> hey, Kate. Hey, Eric. So I heard, and this may be true, that you were actually the Great Pop Culture Debate's very first Patreon subscriber. (gasps) Was I? You were. You're not only a panelist, you're also a founder. Also a founder. I mean, it does give me a feeling of joy to contribute towards high quality podcasts like the Great Pop Culture Debate so that, you know, like I get swag. Yeah. What kind of swag do you get? Um, You get a button. That's the one I signed up for. Is there a tote? I feel like there should be a tote. (laughs) There's not a tote yet, but that's a great idea. I have some other ideas that I'm working on. You get access to things early. You get access to Patreon only little minisodes. You get to hear the warm-ups before when everyone's just kind of getting their little sea legs before they get into the main the main attraction and you get season zero you get season zero it's exactly right you will never hear the otherwise folks and there's some great episodes in that which include best madonna single best rupaul's drag race lip sync best uh 90s cartoon and the only way you can hear those is by getting a patreon sponsorship with for as low as two dollars a month then you even get season zero just for that so so thank you very much kate uh we appreciate all of our patreon sponsors and if you do have the interest, please go to patreon.com backslash great pop culture debates and support us. Welcome back to round two of our best karaoke song debate. I think I hear Blondie's Call Me coming on. So on that note, how can people follow you on social media? Andrea? You can find me on the Cursive Bird app Twitter uh, at Dre Souffle. <laughs> delicious <laughs> curtis how about yourself i am also on uh, at, <laughs> at curtis uh and you can i i don't i'm so terrible at social media i am the worst millennial i don't keep it up but like you can go through my history and laugh i guess he has a blistering live journal from 2003 now. <laughs> i actually did don't remember I, what that I, one was though i knew you did uh kate how about you I am on the Cursed Bird at Kate Raculia. And if you like cat pics, I got a whole bunch of them for you on Instagram Ooh. at Gomez Rack. Good also Twitter delicious. account. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and as for me, you should definitely be following at Great Pop Culture Debate on Instagram and at Culture underscore Debate on Twitter. But you can also feel free to follow at Eric Resniak on both. That's E R I C R E Z is in zebra, S is in snake, N is in Nancy, Y A K. Uh, <laughs> moving on to the debates. First up, we have Proud Mary versus I Will Survive. We're going to go around the horn. I'm going to start with Andrea. Which one do you pick? I am picking Proud Mary for this one. All right. Kate. Proud Mary. Curtis. Yeah, I cleaned a lot of plates in Memphis. <laughs> um i'll make it a clean sweep um again like listen I, I i actually have gotten to the point where i can't listen to i will survive anymore it's actually <laughs> I, I i can't do it anymore whereas like proud mary you've got deep shoulder action i'm sold mm-hmm. um always sounds good always sounds good next up summer nights versus midnight train to georgia we'll go reverse order kate i'm gonna go with midnight train i know i know Hmm. All right, Curtis. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I argued for both of these in the first round, mm-hmm. and I think I'm going to go with Summer Nights. Um, it's just again, you get the audience participation, and it's much more difficult to find pips than it is to find. 
high school stand-ins. Some, so. some T-Birds or some Pink Ladies. Thank you. I could not think of their names. I've had a little bit too much bourbon tonight. I appreciate you. So You're Summer welcome. Nights, please. Thank you. Andrea. I gots to go with Midnight Train. <laughs> I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Um, I'm going to make it a tie. I do think uh, Summer Nights is actually the better karaoke song here. I really do for exactly what Curtis was just saying. Finding good pips is hard. I mean, ask Gladys. Um, whereas it's so easy to get a bunch of bros and sassy ladies in a club saying, a willow, 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 right? Like, a bunch of, a bunch of like way too old for it's playing teenagers. Yes. Except, which I mean, as in life, as in art, right? Yes. Um, so it's a, it's a tie, which means it goes to Andrea for the tiebreaker this time. And I think I know where this is going, Andrea. We're going to Georgia with this one. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, All midnight aboard, tra- bitch. All aboard. <laughs> midnight Train to Georgia advances. Next up, it is You Ought to Know versus Love Shack, our unanimous just uh, picks from last round. So uh, when we do make our picks here, I do want to have an actual debate. I'm going to start with Curtis. This is so unfair. It is. is. This is my final two. Yeah. If we were to put the entire bracket, these are the two top numbers. Um, So let me talk about both of them. This is going to be a while. (laughs) I I, I adore, right? Light the fire. I adore both. I love Alanis Morissette, the the CD Mm. children, a compact Mm -hmm. disc that is currently in my car's stereo. Oh, your car. CD it right sure treasure. does. It is so a 2009 mine. Ford Focus. Oh, my soul's a 2009. You have to cry that CD and play your car out of my cold, dead hands. It is Jagged Little Pill. Um, the musical Jagged Little Pill is also fantastic. I love everything that she has done. Just, it's also sensational. You Ought to Know has, oh God, it is just the best angry song ever written. Every emotion you could ever want to feel came out in that song. The B-52s brings the crowd, right? It's a happy song. It's fun. It's camp. It means absolutely nothing. You get to yell tin roof. This is the (laughs) final (laughs) two to me. Like This is so, so difficult. Uh, But I'm going to go with You Ought to Know because I don't... mm, Let me look at the list. Yeah, nothing else on this song is truly quite as angry and you have to have an angry karaoke song because everybody has been in that that place where you go out to the bar and you just broke up with your boyfriend because he <laughs> cheated on you and you need to sing. This is the song that you're going to perform and everybody in that audience is going to perform it with you. Point of order. If that was the case, it has never been the case for me. I 100% would go to Conderwood and before he mm. cheats, before yes. I would go to You Ought to Know, which is no. a great great karaoke and every time i scratch my nails nails down down someone someone else's else's back back. i hope hope you you feel feel (laughs) we had a nice duet right there Um, all right uh andrea so here is my spicy take for this episode I could go the rest of my life with never hearing Love Shack by the B-52s <laughs> ever again. No. Oh, wow. Totally no. fine. Wow. I, <laughs> I cannot stand this song. And I think uh, it was just overplayed in my childhood because we listened to a lot of Motown and oldies. And this was just one of those songs that like I remember was on when we were like forced to like clean the house and stuff as kids. Like, you know, your parents like played like happy, upbeat music for you to make it seem like it was a good time. It wasn't. It was terrible. And I just there's no redeeming quality about Love Shack for me personally. And I understand that this is a very subjective point of view. Um, but and I also agree with Curtis that if you're going to go out and be angry about Love Lost, this is the Alanis Morissette song that you will choose, especially if it's a man person that you are way too good for to begin with. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dave Coulier. Dave Coulier. <laughs> talking to you, sir. I got to say, like... If I ever break up with someone, I'm going to go out and I'm not going to be angry. I'm going to be like, I'm a free bitch, baby. (laughs) (laughs) It's fascinating to me. Kate, take it. All right. So everything you've said in praise of Alanis Morissette that has been said on this podcast in praise of Alanis Morissette, I a 
two thousand percent. I'm so glad she was around when I was a teenager, like providing healthy models for expressing feelings. <laughs> And like everything that I talked about in my matrix, right? Sheer fun to sing and to hear recognition factor. Everyone knows the song, but it's not, it's always sounds good. Sincerity scale. Those feelings are effing real. Mm. Like it is, it is, it is such a perfect marriage of song and feeling. Um, But I got to give it to love shack and I'll tell you why. Uh, Not just because, Eric and Chris and I like had a transcendent experience singing this. And like, it's actually, uh, it's a pretty easy song to sing that like, if you have like a basic training, I am an alto, like you can sing harmony in this. Like, Mm. it's really fun. It's not hard. And you just need someone, you need Eric to be a wonderful friend. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like it was the role I was born to play. Yeah. And you're so good at it. You're so good at it. So it's, it's a, it's like a group song where everyone kind of has separate fun things to do where there's a little latitude, but it's not out of reach for people. Um, It's immensely fun. It's immensely bright. It means nothing. Tin roof rusted. What the fuck does nothing? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Ironically, it means nothing. It means that I'm happy and I'm drunk and I'm with my friends. And the other thing that I love about Love Shack too is for me, I'm so sorry, Andrea, that your parents conditioned you to not like this song. That's awful. It happens. Like, mm. like it does happen. <laughs> Everyone has that song. This song I literally remember hearing on the radio at Y94 FM when I was a young person and just being like gobsmacked by it. I had never heard. I mean, I was a very like smooth, like adult contemporary. Give me all your Philip Collins. Give me all your Whitney Houston. (laughs) Like that was where I was as a child. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm so glad. But like I heard this song and I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, that's not music. That's terrible. And like (laughs) have gone through my life increasingly appreciating the aesthetic, the style, the joy, the wild weirdness of the B-52s. And Love Shack is a fantastic karaoke song. Yeah. And here's my thing. I'm going with Love Shack, which I know gets us to a tie and I don't like where this is heading. But um, (laughs) if the topic is best karaoke song, I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Love Shack is a crowd Pleaser. Pleaser, everyone. Everyone happy. in that room Except is you, going Andrea, to lose it. Yeah, right? just me. Which, I'll be outside smoking. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> it's so funny to me that like this song, you you came to hate it because your parents like played fun music for you to do your chores. Like I lived in a gulag, so like, <laughs> they didn't even bother with that. They're just like, you will do your chores, and you will not get the gruel. Um, <laughs> I, I kid. Uh, we weren't. We weren't. We were too poor to be a gulag. Um, but uh, it, Love Shack kills at a karaoke bar even a mediocre love shack is still going to get everyone yep. up and going yep, and a yep, good see, love shack like a good love shack is will get the party popping i'm just the bar will be like selling drinks like nobody's business people will be laughing they will be dancing they will all be singing along that's my main argument on it, but I also want to point out that Love Shack actually is the first introduction of RuPaul to America. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In case you were not aware, th- that is completely relevant, but I'm putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is the video that introduced RuPaul to America. So just, I think we need to put a little respect on its name. That being said, <laughs> Curtis, you're the tiebreaker this time. America, let me tell you that he gave you that little niblet of knowledge specifically to try to sway my vote i just it's wanted true. you to know that it's true and did it sway your vote this is the most unfair it really is <laughs> it's matchup awful. as it's like awful. an elite eight matchup it's just the worst because these are the top two songs for me they really truly are i think this is the hardest of everything that I've done on this podcast, this is season four, and wow. of all of the matchups, this one is the hardest because they represent two totally different things, and they are both so amazing in their own way. <sighs> and I'm still going to give it to you, Ought to Know. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Eric. And I'm sorry, Kate. Tim <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to apologize to the listeners for your wrong decision. (laughs) And I think you specifically need to apologize to the B-52s who are legends. (laughs) They're icons and I adore them. No disrespect to the one thing I will say. Thank you, Curtis. I will be allowed in my bed this evening (laughs) (laughs) because my husband is the biggest Alanis Morissette fan of all time. That is not why I chose it. I promise you. It is, it is just such a good, like you all said, you all said that when, 
uh, Love Shack comes on, the whole room is with you. I, I agree. I totally agree. But I also think when You Ought to Know comes on, everybody, it's wrapped with attention. Everybody turns to look at that stage because everybody has been there. Everybody has been angry, whether it's in a relationship or not. You know that feeling that is coming out of that person. And I just, I want to represent it more. I want to push it forward. So I'm they're, going with They're you both know. cathartic in their way, right? True, like, true. And another version of me. Curtis chose <laughs> violence. <laughs> it was the right answer. That's right. All right. So we are advancing. You ought to know. Finally, in the Elite Eight, it's Rehab versus Don't You Want Me. And I'll start with Andrea. I like going with Rehab on this one. Curtis. I really don't care here. <laughs> this was this is a throwaway, but I, I supported Rehab earlier, so I'm going to go with Rehab, even though it apparently makes you all feel bad. Kate? Don't you want me, baby? That's what I want. <laughs> I, I'm also going with "Don't you want me?" So that means it's another tie, and that means Kate, you need to get you get to use your tiebreaker vote. Ah, uh, Human League. Great. I uh, was working <laughs> as a waitress in a cocktail bar. <laughs> that much is true. Stop it! We're going to be demonetized. You're too good. <laughs> 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 All right, so we have a final four of Proud Mary versus Midnight Train to Georgia and You Oughta Know versus Don't You Want Me. Uh, first, this is not in any way a close to the final four that I thought we were going to have, so that's exciting. Mm -hmm. um, it just goes to show you how bonkers this episode is, but, you know, that's fun. Um, Kate, you start. Proud Mary versus Midnight Train to Georgia. Midnight Train. Andrea. This is a tough one. This is this is my these were my top two. I think both of these were on my original playlist that I sent. And I love both of these songs so, so much. <sighs> I got to go with Midnight Train. My heart, yeah. my heart soul is telling me to go with Midnight Train. Yes. Curtis. Could not disagree more. So because I'm a narcissist, I must point out I had three of the top four correct. <laughs> um, but obviously it doesn't matter moving forward and it doesn't matter at all because the what is it the the rules are made up of the points don't matter is that <laughs> that's basically it yes correct yeah. um it's like calvin ball to me this isn't a contest i really enjoy midnight train of georgia i think it's fun but in terms of a song a karaoke song that people can perform that people know and that get people interested and moving or not even moving, but just like engaged. It is Proud Mary every single time. And all I can say, and I can't even say it, I can just do it, is that dance move that <laughs> Tina Turner did mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where you stick your arms out in front of you and you put your head down <laughs> and then you stick your arms behind you and you put your head up and you do that six different times throughout the song. And that alone, everybody in that club, that bar, wherever you are, even in your tiny little room by yourself, whoever <laughs> else is there, they are doing that dance because it is iconic. Proud Mary is an iconic karaoke song in a way that I don't think Midnight Train is. Totally agree. Like everything he just said, I completely agree. Listen, Midnight Train Drive is a beautiful song. And if you can sing it in karaoke, it's going to be great to listen to. But Proud Mary's going to get the house jumping. If we go over to Love Shack last round, which is a guaranteed crowd pleaser, the closest thing we have to that in this final four is Proud Mary. Once you hit that like upbeat section of that song, the you have got the room. It, that you have to keep the room, but you've got the room instantly. It's what you're going to do with it. And I think if you can pull out that dance, give me some deep shoulder action, a little shimmy, give me a little attitude. Yes, bitch, work. That's what I have to say. I, I do not see any universe in which uh, Midnight Train should take it to the top two. Kate, are you sticking with Midnight Train? I am. Really? I am. And Andrea, you're sticking. I am because, and here's why, there's no... There's no black velvet on this playlist. Ooh. There's no fancy on this playlist. There's no like true soulful ballad on this bracket. And if you if you can sing, if you're the ringer that the group brought, this <laughs> is a song to do. And I, I disagree that people don't know this song. I think people know this song. They don't know that they know this song until it comes on and it gets to the chorus. That is my defense for Midnight Train. And it's a compelling argument. So that, that that was a good argument and you almost swayed me back. But mm -hmm. I still come back to if we're talking about a bar full of people who don't know you, which song are they going to be more captivated by? They're 
they're going to want the energy. They're going to want that ass wiggling on that stage. <laughs> the the wings, wings. Honey, wings. <laughs> what is it from Showgirls? I want to see asses wiggling. I want perfection. Is that from Showgirls? I feel like it is. Whatever. Anyway, um, I guess it's back to me for the tiebreaker. And I'm giving it to proud Mary ladies. I'm sorry. That's that's the, that's that's the breaks. Yep. As I'm not mad about proud Mary winning over Midnight Train at all. As Naomi Smalls once said to us, <laughs> "Life's <laughs> not fair." <laughs> all right. Finally, it's you ought to know versus don't you want me? I'm going to start with Curtis. Uh, do you have to? Um, I have to ask a question. <laughs> I guess you. Yes. Okay. So Alanis, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kate. Alanis. I know I stumped for Human League, but Alanis all the way. And Andrea. I literally don't care about that Human League <laughs> song. So it's going with Alanis. <laughs> uh, I will also throw in for Alanis. I think Human League making it to Final Four is quite sufficient. Uh, Proud Mary versus You Ought to Know is our top two. Um, <laughs> Didn't see this coming. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, let's see. One song is about a woman who is, I mean, what is she even doing? I did. I did know. I did see it coming, Kate. I did. <laughs> She's rolling on the river. She's rolling on the yes. river. And God She's cleaned me- a lot of plates in Memphis. She's pop- she pumped popped a lot of tang lot of down in New oh, Orleans. She is that did. What it is? Yep. <laughs> This, uh, you I know think what? it's the second chorus, second verse. She's pumped a lot of tang down in New Orleans. I pumped something in New Orleans. I don't know <laughs> that. Um, versus you ought to know, which is you know the notorious "fuck you" song. So uh, amazing. Um, can I'm I start- can I interrupt real quick? <laughs> Always. <laughs> I'll even start if you want me to. Yeah, go for it. Because Take it away. I also did not know the words to this song. You would think. I mean, I've never performed it, but you what, would you think. What you ought to know? Being, you didn't know. No, the words? no, no. Oh no. Uh, oh. I know every word to that. No, proud Mary. The pumped okay. a lot of tain. So as in she pumped a lot of octane because she worked at a gas station. I thought it was pumped a lot of change. And I didn't know what that meant, but I certainly she, sang it. She's sitting at the slot machines. Just yes. Right corners. there in New Orleans. Come on, pump a lot of change. This needs to be a category. Songs that we don't understand the lyrics. Yeah. Uh, all right, Curtis, what do you got? Proud Mary versus You Ought to Know. This is also really difficult because I think Proud Mary is such a great song. It is a crowd pleaser. You get the dance. You get everything. But I'm still going to give it to You Ought to Know. It is uh, in my opinion, you ought to know is I think one of the best songs ever written. That's how much I like it. That's how much emotion I think comes out of it. And it's not even just the emotion. It's the performance. It's it's the song itself. And it's the connection that you get to make because so many people have been where she was when she made that song about Full House is Dave Coulier. And if you, <laughs> if you didn't know that, that's true. That is a bit Cut of knowledge you get to out. make. Cut it out. <laughs> but that, like, that element of it, the true story, kitschiness <sighs> of it, in some ways is what elevates it to be a perfect karaoke oh pop. oh and i've already said this on another episode but here's another one because curtis can't hear apparently and i <laughs> thought forever until like just a couple of years ago that it was the cross-eyed bear that you gave to me <laughs> which you like, thought was like a stuffed bear that had crossed yes, eyes a stuffed bear <laughs> with crossed eyes i thought he had given her like a carnival gift that he had won with crossed eyes like the bear <laughs> That is what I said. That's a visual. That is a visual right there. I love that. Cross-eyed bear that you gave to me. I can totally see Dave Coulier giving her a fucking cross-eyed bear. (laughs) Oh my God. That is where my vote goes. Curtis, I don't think you ever said that on the podcast. It's really? amazing. And I now I literally had. want merch. I want merch with, that is like literally a t-shirt of someone handing someone a cross-eyed teddy bear. Yes. <laughs> You ought to know, Eric. You I, I, I ought to know. I really should. Okay, Andrea, where are you? Oh God, I'm so torn. I could, I could like no, torn away on that went out around yeah. one. Yeah. I'm, yeah, sorry. She's she's gone. Um, God, I up until this moment, I was proud Mary all the way. I was a proud, proud Mary. But I think I have been flipped to you ought to know. All right. What was specifically the argument that that changed your mind? I I love um, that everyone has a common connection to this song. Like a lot of people have pointed out, is everyone has felt this emotion. Um, 
and it's very easy to relate to. The entire crowd can participate. You don't have to be able to sing really well to do this song. You can do the Kevin impersonation from The Office while you're doing this song. <laughs> um, there's just a lot of potential with it. And I, Proud Mary, you really have to be a performer. You have to know what you're doing with Proud Mary. Whereas with Alanis Morissette, you just got to be angry. Hmm. And it's 2021 in America. Everybody's angry. Everyone's so. angry. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Kate, what about you? Uh, you ought to know. It, it's like I said, it hits all three of those things. And also the lyrics are just so they're a little tricky. There's a lot of words, right? Mm-hmm. Like that you say fast, but like it's not it slips off the tongue perfectly. Um uh, yeah, because the love that you gave that we made wasn't able to make it enough for you to be open wide. No. And every time you speak her name, does she know how you told me you told me until you died? Until you until died. You died. Yeah. But you're still alive. Because <laughs> the, the joke that you made in the bed that was laid, and I'm not going to fade as soon as you close your eyes. And you and know, you know it. it. <laughs> we have a Lilith Fair happening right here. <laughs> And I have to say, I'm not mad about that. No. Uh, and and you're like, is an older version of me, is she perverted like me? Would she go mm. down on you in a theater? Just like, uh, uh, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's the perfect karaoke song. It's good. It's great. It's not what I expected, but I feel good about that. Same here. Same here. And I will also yeah. give my vote to you, I don't know, not just because of the cross-eyed bear, which is my new favorite thing. <laughs> um, but that was the real funny. reason why I picked it? No. <laughs> if, if I assumed. Um, hey, merch, people. Buy your shirts. Merch. Um, I do have to say that uh, when you're performing it, it gives you a lot of opportunity for um, really – kind of camping it up i mean that you uh, you uh, you you know what i mean (laughs) like you can really kind of make it your own and um just scream and but you have to have the hair flips right you've got to be able to do the head bangs you got to be able to do that if you can't do that like my my lower back is a mess right now i couldn't do it but (laughs) you know if you've got that going for you or at least some bengay at home i think it's a crowd pleaser i think it's gonna work for you so there you have it our pick for the best karaoke song of all time is you ought to know by alanis morissette Do you agree with our choice? Do you think we are way off key? Let us know your pick by leaving a comment on this episode at greatpopculturedebate.com or yell at us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube. While you're there, make sure that you like and subscribe for more great pop culture debate content. Thank you to my panelists. I will always do it with you. And thank you for listening. Until next time, remember, everyone is entitled to their wrong opinions. Now, who wants to queen out and do the Moulin Rouge version of Lady Marmalade with me? Oh, me, me, me. <laughs> Creole Lady Marmalade. Maya. Maybe a little too I was going to ask if you would. All right, we're out of here. <laughs>